the, the rays there, the darker the rays was, the one where you got the corner and it's this bare crack you can smell in the corner, whatever. Them rays <laughs> were the best, best. raves. Because you're on edge. You don't know if it's going to go off or yeah. not. But believe me, that sticky vibe. Oh, I get goosebumps, you tell it. I you remember can't them. beat it. You can't. That was like. Yeah, yeah, that was a thing. Like you, you have to be in their range yes. there. You want to be, yeah. and that's the saying. That's oh. that's like folklore. That yeah, becomes exactly. the street folklore. Street, yeah, that is it. You have to be there. If you're someone, if you think you're someone, you better be at that yeah. rave there because that's what it is. Blue Note, Metalheads, yeah. for starters, so cool. you go in that place and you're just like, the energy. Yeah, <laughs> and the music comes on and everyone's just like. Yo, it's a it's a zone. He said, "Yeah, yeah, in the zone. Everyone, as I'm saying, it's a whole culture, a whole scene. Mm. That's and that's what's missing nowadays. The scene. Yeah. And then, then there was a scene. Yeah. The people have come and dismantled the scene and whatever and watered it down because they know that unity is strength. Yeah. But that when they were that's the scene there and everyone's there's a a light a cohesiveness and a light mindedness and it's, it's powerful. As a club promoter, um. I know you'll appreciate where I'm coming from. General managers don't want that shit in their clubs. Killer Keller podcast. Killer Keller official dot com. Street culture TV. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Get it, ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast. <laughs> it's a special one. Um, big shout out to everybody that's been sharing and caring from the jump. Um, uh, without question, uh, if it wasn't for you, there'd be none of this. There'd be none. Of this. There'd be no good reason for us to even press record here. How sponsors the mighty GK Nifty Heads have a massive one hundred thousand play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for Hodder Wars Summer 2024. Inside the house. I mean, this man no needs no introduction. Um, if you were ever around and continue to be around uh, the cycles of the street culture life, you'll know this gentleman prominently in the European sound system scene. Um, Heartless Crew. <laughs> oh, little, oh my God. Uh, one extra very own big up my brother Bushkin inside the place. Yes, <laughs> I love the intro there, Bob. I'm feeling very humble now. Big up, big up. Big real recognises real no, right that. here. Yes. And it's your birthday. Coming up soon, yeah, I'm a Gemini. Big up all the Geminis out there. <laughs> twins there, my twinnies, my Gemini twins. Um, every year I do a mad party. I'll move it around this year. I'm going to Manchester. You know you're on the guest list, plus however many you want. If you all want to come, you, you send, we'll roll out the red cup for you. But yeah, Manchester, man, we're going money this year. Royal V, the club. Um, yeah, man, I'm inviting one and all, man. You know, it's a love thing and it's a vibes thing. It's right. Manchester's got it popping at the yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah, trust me, man. Last year I was in Birmingham and Birmingham, the vibe was electric there. I love so Birmingham. We're going to see if Manchester can can top the vibes, man. We'll, we'll, Raise the heat. We'll, yeah, we'll find out on the 8th of June. Um, do you, oh God, I mean, your legacy, the legacy alone, I mean, to, to, to be in that privileged place of being the age where you're curating and creating and, and we were talking about this actually, to be fair, before we jumped on the, the whole idea of real recognising real and knowing when the nuances of a scene suddenly change and come from, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's a, it's a good feeling to still be there many years later mm. and seeing the change and being able to adapt with the changes and ride the waves and, and the ups and downs because mm. it hasn't always been up you understand? as mm. you know you understand? we go down and then, but it's, it's how you bounce back you mm. understand? how resilient you are and for anyone out there who's in, interested in, in the music industry and trying to get into it like you really do have to be resilient and have tough skin man and, and, and know thyself you've got to mm. know yourself but yeah man it's, it's a good feeling man it's yeah. Yeah, yeah, loving it, man. That's what we're saying. It's an empowerment to yourself, isn't it? Because when you, okay, you do something off the bat at a young age, yeah, and you say to yourself, "Wow, how did I ever get myself?" Wow, yeah. you think you, even in your own head, you're like, that, "Was that it's luck?" Crazy, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yes, yeah, it was. Yeah, I mean, the good we. It's weird with, with, with me in particular. Yeah, we've done a lot as Heartless Crew and then I've set up my own stuff and whatever. And people always say, like, um, 
wow, you got smashed it, yeah, you got killed it, this, that, and that. But what was in my head originally, what man set out to do, haven't actually accomplished it yet. And probably that's half the reason why I've still got the energy and the enthusiasm mm. because there, there's more to do and there's always more to do. And like man set out to make some change through the power of music. You know and, and the opposition is, is strong out there right now. There's yeah. a, a very strong opposition who are doing whatever they're doing in the ways they're doing it, you understand? And in, in a way, it's a... It's, it's a good and an evil, mm. it's a, and it's a battle, and the battle doesn't end. Mm. So yeah, man, there's there's more there's there's more work to be done. Where do you get your? Listen, we're talking a Bushkin right. <laughs> Where do you get your tenaciousness from? Where what drives you to you know be here? Wake up in the morning, get yeah. get busy. What what is the driving force for Bushkin? Um, I love it. I actually love it. Like I said, I want to make change. I, I apologise publicly on camera because today I was actually so late, but I'm trying to cram everything <laughs> in. And that's it because I just want to do more. There's always more. I, you know, I just want to do more and I actually enjoy it. And I'm, my trick, I always tell people, is that I just do the things that I love. Mm. I'm around people that I like and mm. love and who's like-minded. You know, mm. And that just fuels me and, and drives me. And when I get burnt out, which is very often, I get on a plane, I go away by myself somewhere, recharge, and come back because it's you know everyone wants something. It's like the yeah, entire and that's why I say it, it, you've got to be resilient. You really got to know yourself and know what you want and why you're doing it because mm. this it ain't easy. There's days I wake up and I'm like, oh my gosh, give me a break. <laughs> really? Like literally, my phone is just popping from I bust my eyes to the night. My phone's and everyone wants something and you know it's the more popular you get, the more you're climbing the ladder, mm. the more everyone wants you and everyone's offering you this and they, they want you to do that and. It's a lot, but ultimately I love it, and I it wouldn't change the world. And you know what? I'm on a mission. Mm. I'm on a mission for change. You understand? I want to. I want to bring about love, happiness, good vibes, and mm. stuff like that. You understand? Like I said, the opposition is strong right now, yeah. so we can't afford to crumble. No. And working with the culture, working with the, uh, the ear to the ground, mm. the response to every single moment of because you know you you come from a, a pedigree, a real fucking pedigree. Um, mm. And there was different, uh, there was different tones. There was different um, rules yeah. and uh, different ways in which you could promote yourself. Yeah. It's about trying to stay current, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, I mean, the good thing is you, you said a good word. We don't hear it often enough. Pedigree and like, not knocking the the, the new era or any other eras, but the era we came from, mm. it was built on talent. People really took their time to harness their craft and practice. And and we went through that doing the ten thousand hours and twenty thousand hours, mm. just non-stop practicing, homing in at your craft without all the distractions that are there nowadays. And in a way, that made our kind of generational that era, in my opinion, just a bit more better. You yeah, understand? Yeah, yeah. And so it's in a way because of that talent. It's I want I don't want to say anything's easier or harder, but. Because could you got a certain level, mm. it you can sustain it a bit better, you understand? And then, and when you know what, it's the cream rises when you're good, you understand? And people, we celebrate that, especially as elders. We look at people, and you know, as soon as someone comes through the door, and you're like, "Yo, they've got it." Yeah, we almost sort of incubate that. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's right. You have to harness that mm. talent there because these days, now it's not so much about the talent and the actual essence of what what you what you do these days there's so many other things and i'm not knocking it because again you've got to adapt you know so now it's a, it's all it's a lot to do with social media now mm -hmm. you know which mm -hmm. i can't it's a cure and a curse in mm -hmm. a way you know and it is what it is but nowadays it's all to do with numbers how much numbers is someone getting how much likes and then people mm -hmm. doing funny things to get more likes and mm -hmm. and it go it's just going away from in my opinion, what it reasonably really was. The essence. The essence, the incense. It's just going away from that. And to me, again, I could bring it right back full circle. It's, uh, music is to touch people, to uplift people, mm. incense, to change the vibration. Mm. Incense. That's what, and that's what gets me up in the morning because I, they, I still want to do that. And that's mm. what I've set out to do. Is it, is it, is, is our journeys, is it all based on fault lines? Because social media of its time now, it, it severed elements of, maybe, you know, like take for instance a, a Tipperary or a Sweetie or a, or a Navi yes, Navigator. Or, you know? Exactly, you know absolutely. They're man of yeah. flowers, they're classics. <laughs> come on, come yes. On. But these guys, um, they uh, we take notes because we know that their 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 the fault lines lie back straight back to sound. 
sound yes, system. That's right. You know. Yeah, it will come from sound system culture, really and truly. And that gave you, like you said, I'm, I'm going to harp on that word, it gave you a certain pedigree, a certain mm. energy, and then a certain reason, a certain thought process. Mm. You know, and, um, and it, again, it's partly to do with a struggle as well. When you've got a certain struggle mm. you know, and a certain fight, it gives you a reason to do something, it gives you a reason to be who you are, to have a voice and stuff like that. Mm. Which nowadays, social media kind of, I mean, there's still people fighting and saying what people still got a voice, but by and large, social media has kind of eradicated that to an extent. And now it's it's just about mm. so you, you don't even know what it's about. Yeah, and yeah. really, Julie, it's just, it's, yeah. it's it's a madness. It's a a, a, a a skewed perception of what standards are. Yeah, mm. man. Standards are the standards, and I say this. Ian Zan, and if anyone can challenge me on it. Right now, the standards are low. Yeah. They're very, 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 very low. The standards are low. Anyone's just doing anything, you understand? There ain't no, before there was a certain, you had to be of a certain standard and a certain level to mm. get you. Now, nah, anyone just come with anything yeah. and you're hot on social media. You can even buy numbers and fake numbers and it's just a mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, yeah. So, in a way, this is what we're, we're trying to fight and get back to the essence and mm. get, strip all that away and let's get back to the real nucleus. The real and, nucleus. Yeah, Thank what it you. is, the vibe, the, you understand, the essence of this thing, why we all started it in the beginning, why we love it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Give me um, give me a couple of people, if or maybe one. Maybe there is one uh, isolated incident where you're just like, yo, this new cat right here is about to... He, that air of discovery. Yeah. Like, oh, my... Where did they come from? Because you're, you're on the periphery. You're, yeah. you're, you know, you're up there seeing things and people coming through to your show. Yeah, yeah. Who, who's, who's, who's at the moment really, really saying something? Um, it's a tricky <laughs> question. It's a, good, it's a good question. It's a good question. You know what? I mean, I big up Screw Fizzer. He's not mm -hmm. new, you understand? He's been about for quite some time, but he's really, he's a really talented person, like consistently really talented. I mean, I don't know if that fits the criteria of your argument because I suppose he's not fresh, but I think he doesn't get as much flowers as he possibly deserves mm. for how, how good he is. Um, I mean, I'm going to be a slightly biased. I'm working with a young girl called Aya Blue. Aya Blue. She's from Manchester. Okay. Aya Blue, she always cussed me for saying yeah. that. I will, will, will Old tight names. <laughs> yeah. um, Aya Blue, she's brilliant. Like, when I met her, um, a lot of artists come to the studio and stuff like that, and um, and I speak to them and always ask them around about questions and stuff like that. But in my mind, I kind of know mm. what I'm looking for and what I want to hear. And and I was talking to her, and I feel like if I no, I didn't actually even ask her. She said because sometimes it's a question that I ask a lot of artists, like, do you want to be a superstar? What are you trying to do? And do you want to mm -hmm. be famous and things like that? And she, before I could even get there, she was like, I want to be a superstar. But she just had it. You know when someone's just got that? They they're, just got it. They're yeah. beaming. She, yeah, she lives in Manchester. She will drive to the studio. Mm -hmm. She'll she, she say, look, I'll eat pot noodles. I don't care. Like, mm -hmm. I want to make it. Mm -hmm. And that drive and stuff, I, I resonate with that because that's kind of how I am. I'm like, oh, okay. One. And mm. then when I look at other artists and see the comparisons and some people don't even want to get yeah. on a bus or a train to get to the studio or stuff like that. Yeah. And I think they'll say, oh, okay, it's a clean difference. And this is why some people make it and some yeah. people don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people just got that. I'm not taking it for an answer. She's good. She's willing to practice. Mm. She's got a good image. She's got, she will try to dance. She's, she's got a character. All the tick boxes that mm. you want to see with an artist, like she, I'd, I'd call her name and she's, she's really good. Um, it's the fight in the dog, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Where does that yeah. come from in, a, in an artist? Is it is it their circumstances? Do you think? It, I, 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 this, we spend a lot of time on podcasts debating yeah. it because it, it really is a it's a it's, it's a, a funny, zeitgeist, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a funny thing. I was speaking <laughs> to someone yesterday, and we, we we was talking about parenting and stuff like that, and um, and they were saying like. They're basically saying they're trying to bring. They want to. They didn't have kids. They want to bring their kids in a certain up in a certain way. And I was like, well. You can try your best, but even if you give them everything and, and do the best, mm. they can still turn out to be a drug dealer or a prostitute or a murderer. Yeah. You just don't know, no. you understand? That you can do everything the best you can. Some and then like there's other people who've come from such a hard ship, and then they turn out to be a shining star. So mm. it, it, it really don't know. But anyway, we end up getting to the point because we, we, we were talking about like how, how I'm choosing, and I was saying one thing I. 
I've seen a pattern of is people who come from hardship. They mm. come from that struggle. Mm. You said they generally make something different and make something for themselves. It's a lot of like rich parents and stuff like that where their kids have got everything. Mm. Then sometimes they become lazy, but there's no rule to it. No, there's no. They, you can get little patterns and try and make, understand this, but there's no rule. And what, I tell you what, a funny thing. This is what my dad told me years ago, and I never understood it, but the older I got, I started to see it. <laughs> and it, it's, it's something that doesn't make sense, but it makes sense. And he said, T two people come in, somebody sees a glass on the table with a, a drink in it, and they pick it up and they drink it. And another person comes and sees the glass on the table, and they knock it off onto the floor. He said, and I used to think, my dad's got a lot of these kind of funny things. These quips, yeah. Yeah, and I used to think, <laughs> What, what does that mean then? What are you trying to say? <laughs> and he won't really say he wants you to work things out for yourself. But yeah. as I got older, I just answered, you don't, you can't really fathom what people will do. No, you can't. <laughs> yes, and so it's, it's just one of them ones there. Yeah. Do you think it's peers? Do you think that, that you know, for, for my time at least, you know, there was Mike Tyson, there was Jordan, there was... The, mm. And he, listen, look, we're not alienating any uh, new new audience members here, and especially the youngsters, but, but you know, this is like... These are, these are critical the icons, questions, you know, yeah. the icons. You know, the, there has to be some sort of honour. Like, if you... Yes, were, if you... If you're... If, for instance, if your dad was this particular way to yeah. leave you to go and think things through, well, that's part of the course, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. It definitely, I mean, upbringing and parenting definitely plays a big part. I, and my dad, like I said, he, he's, he, it's, it's like he had a lot of knowledge. <laughs> yeah, and he would say it, but he wants you to work it out and stuff like that. And he, he put me through a, a certain training. Yeah, and he was quite militant as well. Um, my mum, again, no nonsense, bare one-liners. I mean, I can only talk for myself personally, but this is what shaped me into who I am. And my grand, my grand and my mum in particular, that done a brilliant job. But my mum gave me so many one-liners, like, you're the head and not the tail. If God's with you, who can be against you? Like, loads of little things. There's always a price to pay. She mm. had bare mm. one-liners. But they they, they served me so well throughout my life. And then manners don't cost a thing. And then she said, you, you can say whatever you want to people. Just say it in a nice way. You don't have to be rude about it. Say how you're feeling. You don't have to be rude to say it. You understand? Mm. Um, shit, so many things like that, but they just shape me into who I am now. And people always say to me, "Oh, you're you're really polite." And I say, "Yeah, I am, because yeah. manners are free. Manners don't cost a thing." Sure. And this, this, yeah, this is how I was brought up. And it, again, a certain drive. I see my mum struggle with myself and my brother, and then my sister. She came later. And then, so I saw the struggle, but we went. We had the good times, but we had that close yeah. family bond as well. And when things, when you're kind of on the Butterline, you understand? Yeah. It's that you kind of banding together. Me and my brother, my mum. I remember going to Butlins um, with my mum and my brother, and we was on the coach, and everyone looking at us. But we were, you remember the LA Cool J? I'm gonna knock you out. <laughs> Mama said, knock you out. And we was bumping that all the way up to yeah. Butlins, like, and we were looking at us, but we were just in our vibe, like, <laughs> yeah. crazy. But yeah, so. Yeah, upbringing and family definitely plays a part. Sharpens the sword. Sh yeah, 100%. 100% sharpens the sword, man. And again, it gives you a reason. Yeah, mm. and it gives you a, a, a reason. But then it's, on the flip side, someone may grow up without any parents and mm. and still go for it. So it's, there's things that help and shape, mm. but there's no rules. There's no rules. Um, industry and the things that you ad adopt um, from an artistic place... We have to really move quick because if if we if we miss a trick, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean like the industry? It moves quick, isn't it? Let's take it back, man. Let's take mm -hmm. it back to early, early Bushkin, where you just you know the inception of your idea came into play, and you were ready. You you felt like okay, I'm 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 seventy percent, and I think I've got I've got that tenaciousness. I know exactly mm -hmm. what I want to do. Talk to me about that time. Talk me the beginning stages of Bushkin. Okay, yeah. Uh, again, big up my older brother. I had an older brother, Mr. P's, four years older than me. He was the man. You know, when you got an older brother, you just want to be like your older brother anyway. He had all the trainers. I'm talking about the Nike star, them Ooh. days there, the new balance tracksuits. <laughs> yes, and he had Techniques decks, like more control cars. Like, my brother was the man. <laughs> like, he was on stuff, basically. So I was just always fashioning after him. We had all the roller skates. We used to play hockey. And everything he was doing, I was just trying to 
copying. He used to bring me in as well to an extent. You know, and then sometimes, oh, yeah, you know, his little brother kind of run me. You know, and, but <laughs> yeah, so he had a deck. So he, had, he set up a little sound system with him and his friends. And they had a deck in his room and records. And I used to go in there and try and mess around with them. Um, so in a way, that's what inspired me to set up a sound system. And I went to Fonty. We went to secondary school together. And I was like, yeah, Fonty was a man in my school. Big I have Fonty, to, come on. Big, he was the man. Like Legacy names right here. Trust Ooh. me, he is a... People know Fonty just for his decks and whatever. But mm. when I met Fonty, Fonty was a dancer. He could do all the break dancing, all the... Um, what was it? New Jack Swing, all that kind of stuff come in. <sighs> But Fonty was a man that like yeah. the bell, the bowl that he had all those moves. He could chat. He was a singer. He could Fonty can play music. He could play that trumpet. He can play piano. Still pan like when you know when someone can do everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stupid yeah, yeah. like Fonty can read music. He's classically trained, so he can actually read music. A lot of people can just play music, but he can actually read it as well. That's like, on ten thousand hours again. Yeah, wow, it, the guy is just. Stupid with it. He could cut hair. He was a barber in school. Everything. You know what I'm So I went to Fonty like, like yo, Fonty, <laughs> let's start a sound. You get me? Uh, and there was another guy, David Ogwan. He was in my class. David Ogwan was like a brain box as well. Um, so that was like that. Um, I've always been very competitive, very driven. Um, so we 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 started. We were really young, and you had a few older sounds, the Black Mafias, um, Thunder Force. These were kind of mm. two years older than us. Um, so we were trying to catch them up, trying to always. So we we spent so many hours practicing. Fonty used to get up in the morning and um, practice before he went to school in Zan, and we'd be practicing after. I've been all day, every day. I'm hustling in school, and we'd go after school and go and buy records together down Finchley Park or whatever. So like it was a a journey. Then we we started to make money. We bought our own sound system, like power amps. We got Uncle Deswell, that was Fonty's um, uncle. He helped us. We couldn't drive, obviously, at that time. So he used to help us transport the sound. We bought our speaker. We sprayed them red, like power amps, decks, sound lab Yo. decks. Went through the whole thing. Like before, we could even we couldn't even afford techniques. We've got sound labs. Like I think they were like two fifty back the in the days. The belt driven business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The belt bit, belt driven business. Belt, right? Yeah, old school. So we bought the, the sound lab decks. Yeah, you understand? Know Papa went through the journey of the sounds and playing at community halls, getting knocked, you know what I'm saying? Like getting 30 pounds for cab for home mm. and like, all sorts of things. Went through it, man, threatening to throw our speakers off the top balcony, all of that. We actually come, you know what, when we was young, we came to um it was around was it, was it like Kent? It might have been around here. Neesden. Okay. We came to Neeson <laughs> when we were young. Someone's going to know this, like, think, well, that was us. Because we came here um, when we was young. We was probably in the fifth year of secondary school. Maybe fourth or fifth year. So young as still. We still young, yeah. We was in, we still, yeah, we was, I think we might have been fifth year at school, yeah. Um, I remember my brother was from South London. He was a school year older than us, but he'd been put back into our year. So when we said, yeah, we're going to play knees and where he's from South, he was from Clapham. He was like, nah, nah, you man are good. Uh, I'm, I'm, I ain't on that very, very. You know what I'm saying? We're like, oh, whatever, cool. So we, we come down, we play the knees then, the instance, us and another sound, both from our area. Mm -hmm. Um. Anyway, the night's going on, um, some boys in the crowd must have said something. And the other sound was like, suck your mum. You remember them times? That was in a big offence. That you was the biggest of that was, You can't really say them <laughs> kind of things, even now. You know, and they're like, oh, suck your mother. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, the atmosphere changed. You know what I'm the, boy, <laughs> the boys from the party must have left. You know what I'm saying? And they went and called their, whoever their bigger brothers are. You know what I'm saying? And I'm talking about this is like mid-90s. They come down like a space cruiser in a car, you know what I'm saying? Rolled up. Rolled up, you know what I'm saying? We're in knees. Remember, we're from North London, you know what I'm saying? We've got, and we've bang our sound system, so our sound system there, because we string up the sound system. That's what you do there. And remember, you bring all your records. So we've got crates of records. Rigs everything. after rigs after rigs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. in there, and like the other sound now, they're starting to hide. Man, they're hiding in the bathroom. Man, they're trying to hide in cupboards and whatever, you know what I'm saying? Because they know that these men are coming back. So. Remember, we've not said nothing, so we're like, all right, cool. Everyone's kind of panicking. I've said, all right, come on, then, let's skip out, you understand? We called a cab, and we, we come out the house, you understand? We jumped into the cab. Well, these men, they had some big, like, cleavers. They're trying to open the door, trying to stab man through that thing. What? Yeah, I'm telling you, but you know them times, they, it's a different area in a way. In fact, people are getting stabbed now, but you know them times, it's, it was, it's different. The man For music. For, <laughs> 
it's serious. I'm saying we've come from the days of people getting bottled in clubs, mm -hmm. and you, if your music ain't good and you're not up to a standard, man, are gonna shut you down. Yeah. That's where we come from. Anyway, so that, that was the early early days. That real sound system, hard work, and then we went on to pirate. Started to get some gravitation from there, and then that's kind of we had two shows. Our the guys who run the pirate station said, you know what, guys. Like you doing your R&B and your bashment stuff, your sound and stuff, and we was also playing garage. Mm. We incorporated garage into our sound because that was slowly coming to coming, fruition. Yeah. yeah, jungle came in first. What because we were late. It's by default we started our sound system late. The guys who were, everyone else was two years or four years old, and they'd already set their press. Stay ready yeah. set. So we're playing catch up. So as we're catching up, jungles coming. But instead of our, all those I have guys again by default. Everyone else at that time went to jungle and they started to rave jungle. Everyone remember it was a crack. Everyone started to smoke yeah. and whatever. It was that. But we're younger than everyone. So we're kind of raving jungle, but we're playing it on our sound system. Yeah. And everyone else left so left that space vacant for us. Mm. You understand? So now we're coming really popular. Plus we're playing jungle, what everyone's into. Then it fast forwards again, garage comes in. And again, instead of us just jumping in, we start to adopt garage onto our sound system. So by the time we hit radio station, we're sharp it, uh, right across the board. And the, uh, garage was the in thing. And the, it was a good call. Big up Swifty. He was like the manager of our radio station and a, a mentor to me. Mm -hmm. He goes, you know what, guys? Split your stuff because you're playing a set and you're doing everything in the one. He said, mm -hmm. have a garage day and then you have your mix-up day. So, and gave us two shows. And this, again, how it was at the time, garage was taken off so our garage show went crazy because we and we was playing garage as a sound system and then yeah people don't really know we that, that the journey then garage took off for us and then yeah wow so you were really in that transient moment of that transferal of attention yeah yeah that's exactly exactly that man and the crossroads just aligned because a lot of people who we started the sound system with and then some of them didn't they didn't lucky to cross over and we you know everything's timing you know yeah. it's a, everything's just timing and we I can't say it's luck because we practice night and day you know and we really did go hard in the practicing we trying to make it as jungle um, DJs and MCs didn't happen but by the time Garage came we were so overly yeah. prepared for it it was like bang and it, it just went crazy oh, overly prepared I'm not putting words in your mouth but you guys were the last bastions of sound of that generation. Yeah, yeah, maybe so. You know what I mean? Yeah, Where yeah. sound system really counted. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. Now it's, you got some USB keys and yeah, yeah, yeah. you just turn up and it's like, yeah, the heart, the real, the, again, the essence, DJs nowadays, it's like, it sometimes grieves me because it's so cheap now. Mm. Like, it's so easy to go and download the mm. tune. They don't know about vinyl, going to record store, buying your vinyl, mm. putting on the headphones and playing it, mm. and the, or they're playing in the cupboard and the man said, boy, I've got these exclusives for you. There's a your, scene within that. Of course, there's a whole feeling going and buying rec your tickets from the record shop. Mm. You understand? Know yeah. Going there, you see a couple gal there, and the whole thing was different. Them time that people used to really make an effort, mm. you understand, know getting dressed up and whatever, you understand? Know what was the record stores for? I mean, Black Market, big up Black Market. Black Market was called. We had Pure Groove in our area. Mm, that's um, right. In Archway. Yeah. You had Wired for Sound, they were in Hackney. Um, you had like the ones in West, you had the, um, one was in Labour Grove, what was it called again? Oh, um, yeah, Dad I know Fender. the one. Yeah, there you Dad go, Fender. the Fender, yeah, which is just, just literally off the road from Labour, right? Yeah, there was a couple more. Um, Tottenham Body Music with a big one in Tottenham. Mm. Yo, knowledge, all right? Google that. Yeah. yeah it's they're, all there. Yeah, man. They're, 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 they're legendary. And yeah. Again, these things, they're, they're not even there anymore. No. None of these record shops are even there. It's community. It was a whole... Yeah, it's a whole community. You go out on a Saturday, you know what I'm saying? And you spend hours in there. It's like a barbershop all in a way. Yeah. You go there, you listen to the music, hear new things, you see different people, people come from... out, Especially at the end. I remember going raving them time there. It was different. Like, near the end of the day, not the end of the day, like, say your rave's on Saturday... Like by Thursday, Friday, and up to Saturday, you understand? People, you're going to get people from different areas because that shop over south, they've run out of tickets. So now I'm on a phone around. But uh, people, they've got tickets. So you, you might see people from south. And so, even though that raving community was different. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you know different people, but you don't know them. But you just buck them at different raves. So you become, yo, walk one, and you kind of, mm -hmm. it's got that raving community, that spirit. That's kind of gone nowadays. And it's man. all kind of one and the same as well. I mean, UK hip hop and drum and bass and. Garage, I mean, it was a really 
a flourishing time, it's, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was a scene. Yeah. And in a way, we kind of controlled the scene. The people yeah. controlled it. When yeah. the label was coming and trying to buy everyone out, it watered it down. And, yeah. and it, again, change is inevitable, you understand? Yeah. But, yeah, that, that vibe and, yeah, man. Yeah. The same, like, how you talking about graffiti and just the, the breakdowns and the... Those things, the essence of things. They were applicable in all different genres. And I'll say this much, I've got to give you, man. Like you you championed me from a really early... Like I was one of those ones that I was able to flip because of the beatboxing. Yeah, yeah, it was interesting. It was interesting. Bro, it was mad. I remember going to my first garage raves and I was like, yo, this is... this is Because it was different, but by design, it had to fit. Like, And that's what made the British culture so... so special yeah yeah that's right so many different elements and different vibes in yeah. in the one melting pot and yeah but like i said it on my instagram today the originals you're actually one of the originals of the things so you have to get your flowers as well and it's a, a testimony and how many podcasts you've done and, and stuff like that I, I, yeah Bless i you pick you up brother, man I, I pick you up it ain't easy i tell it to anyone and that's why i stress to anyone mm. who's getting into music and any which way you really have to know yourself, mm. understand yourself, know what you like and, and what you don't like and be resilient and be tough mm. because it ain't easy. So to last the entire the test of time how you've done it and to how we're doing it and the others mm. who are still active for more mm-hmm. time, mm-hmm. it ain't easy, man. And it, man, you really have to give man their flowers because music is one whole thing, as you know, and there's mm. so many pitfalls and the ups and the downs. And then you take that which is life and then put it into life, life as, as well, well. <laughs> but hey um, yeah you're absolutely right uh, stand for something or fall for anything exactly so you have to say it again stand for something or fall for anything yeah know yourself and yeah know thyself man. what was the because uh, oh, you know Garage had such an impact um, it was remnants of early jungle and the the culture followed suit. It's funny. I had a I had a podcast with um, uh, Brocky. Yeah, legend, man. Big Yo. flowers again. Yo. Legend. Brocky dropped legend. some gems, and, and you know, one of the I'm paraphrasing now, but one of the things he did say was um, that uh, you know the the darker side of street. They weren't interested in the music, mm-hmm. but you can't. <laughs> it's almost like cosine, because you need the danger. Exactly. Yes, go on. Yes. You know what I'm saying? That, bro, I'm telling you, when, when we used to go raving, like I said, we was raving in Jungle Hard. My dad was actually security guard at all the jungle raves. So we, me and Fonty was raving that like Thursday to Sunday and was getting in all the biggest raves free and we were the, the youngest in there. And sometimes my dad was bringing champagne and mm-hmm. we, we was living. But the, the raves there, the darker the raves was, the ones where you got the corner and it's just but bare crack you can smell in the corner whatever them rays were the best, <laughs> best raves because you're on edge you don't know if it's gonna go off or yeah. not but believe me that sticky vibe oh, i get goosebumps you tell him it. you can't them. beat it you can't that was like yeah, yeah that was a thing that like you you have to be in that rave yes. there you want to be yeah and that's what i'm saying that's oh that's like folklore that, that becomes exactly. the street folklore. Street, yeah that is it you have to be there. If you're someone, if you think you're someone, you better be at that yeah. rave there because that's what it is. Blue Note, Metalheads. Yeah. For starters, so you go in that place and you're just like, Yo, the energy. Yeah. <laughs> and the music comes on and everyone's just like, yo, it's a, it's a zone. Yeah. It's a, yeah, you're in the zone. Everyone, as I'm saying, it's a whole culture, a whole scene. Mm. That's And that's what's missing nowadays, the scene. Yeah. And then there was a scene. Yeah. The people have come and dismantled the scene and whatever and watered it down because they know that unity is strength. Yeah. But that, when they were the scene there and everyone's there's a, a light, a cohesiveness and a light-mindedness and it's, it's powerful. As a club promoter, um, I know you'll appreciate where I'm coming from. General managers don't want that shit in their clubs. <laughs> They don't even. They know nothing's going to pop off because you're in control. That's right. But that does not stop them wanting to pull plug. Going, nah, nah. I'm not sure about because they sense it. They yeah, feel they can it. Feel it. And they're and they're afraid. Yeah. And that's what that's what, what the biggest problem in the world. Mm. People are scared. Scared. They're afraid. Yes, and they're afraid. Calm down. Relax. Mm. Let it go. Yeah, so that's a whole part of my philosophy and ethos. I, I'm relaxed. I like to be calm. Mm. I'm le- I like to go with the n- flow of things, the natural. Yes, I'm not trying anything too hard. If you have to try to me, 
it's not so natural. You think, no. you're saying, when things are working, you don't have to try. You don't have to try to breathe. You don't have to try to sleep. It's you. You understand? It's just, things are natural. Yeah. They flow, and that's how I am. And again, but a lot of these club owners and whatever, they're afraid and mm. they they on the edge. They get itchy. They're itching. Again, a lot of leadership comes from the top and they, it's trickling down. The people they they don't want this and this. Uh, a load of agendas, and that's a whole mm. other podcast yeah. in itself. Oh my god! You understand? <laughs> but all of that's trickling down into someone who's now the general manager, and now they've got all the pressure. And so, so yeah, so they're going to be jumping. They see certain people, and they don't like the look of these people. Yeah, whatever. yeah. All and they're that. judging. It's, yeah, we know the thing, man. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, it perpetuates as well because um, if you don't have something that honors the craft, honors the the sensibilities of a scene, then what you are left with is a sanitized version. The amount of times I've had conversations with general managers like, yeah, no, but, but we only want locals in. Well, we are locals, motherfucker. Exactly. <laughs> we, exactly. we, we are locals. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's such a joke. Right, well, it's, uh, moving on because that really is another podcast. Is that, yeah, man. That's, the, a, the, that's depth right there. Um, the music started rolling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a normal different. We start, yeah, I mean, we transformed from the MC stuff and we mean to, to making tunes. And you stuff pioneered. Like you were pioneers, man. For yeah. the likes of me, if I was outside of London, do you know what I mean? Your yeah. name resonated. It's something yeah. something was in the water and you guys were just there and you started banging out the, the, banging out the tunes. Yeah. You know what? Again, teamwork makes a dream work. We we had a different we we hit the thing different and our we we came at it with love and a vibe and we were for the people and that's why I think in a way we stood the test of time mm. is then we, we 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 were really about vibe and really about the people and upliftment and um yeah people say we in a way we did people say we started the grime thing and I, I'm not gonna make any bold claims to it but yes what we done definitely. Started that whole wave, mm. you know, because we were just be, being ourselves. We, it's not that like we set out to say, yeah, we're gonna make grime or anything like that. We were just being ourselves. But what we've done definitely is the foundations of grime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. inspired a generation. Yeah, 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 definitely. And I mean, again, we we were just doing what we were doing and having fun, and it was just natural, you understand? Know, but everyone liked what, what they liked it, and in a way. We were free. Mm. That's the thing. That's a, and a, a, it's still to today. We're free. We're not. We weren't trying to be bad boys or mm. anything or any gangster. So people could gravitate to us because like, wow, well, these guys are cool. I like what they're doing, and they're just having fun. Kind of the antithesis, in a way, of like what was current or perceived by the media. Because media, media have a way of spinning things. Yeah, like so solid for its time. Oh my god, I remember. Was it at, at, at London Astoria? They got. Yeah. Band, band and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. We all got banned at once, but yeah, the media spun things and mm. said Gary to attach a vibe. But again, it was a hidden agenda because they yeah. weren't in control. You understand? The people had the power. Mm. You understand? And we were doing our stuff. We had a scene. Yeah. We, everyone was making money. We we're putting on raids and making God knows how much money. We we're pressing records and yeah. whatever. Audi TTs, if we go, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> everyone, yeah, it was, it was flossing and glorious time. Yeah, it was g glorious. <laughs> That's a beautiful word again. You hit another one. Glorious time, brilliant. I look back at those times and I'm like, wow. Like, you know, when you're just young and you've, you're free, you've got money, you don't even realize mm. life yet, the, the real responsibilities of life. And yeah, we was in control. Demonize it. I remember punk for its time. There was certainly that that demonizing of youth. You know, mm. these guys with leather jackets. How dare they? How dare they influence the yeah. the outer fringes of London and and bring these the uh, people to get rave the whole yeah, rave rave's era yeah. same thing said, yes, right. yeah and again the powers that be don't like this right. they don't like when people come together because again they're scared of the people and they're scared of the power that the people hold mm. and again we it's great we're doing things like this and whatever and. and Educating people because when the people band together, we're so much stronger. Mm. Unity, strength, and that's why they try every different step of the way to segregate you and send to segregate black and white, segregate the, the Israelis and the, mm. this one to the Africans and the Jamaicans mm. and the English and the mm. Irish. It's all segregation, you understand? By design, yeah. Yeah, by design, exactly that. By design, because they they're afraid of what will happen if people come together and band together. Do you think we all, you know, we've talked a lot about the younger generation, but I think we all fall into that trap of jumping on our phones quickly. Because, you know, we were pre 
internet. Yes. Um, <laughs> nowadays, it's it's uh, it, it's um, it's like a virus, isn't it? Where it's a lot more accessible for people to be influenced. Very much so. Yeah, again, it's not that they don't know this. There's, they could, you understand, cut things so on the internet. It's wide open for anyone to see anything, you understand, which is, it can impregnate the mind of young and weak people, you understand. So, uh, again, it gave us a certain standard and a certain moral kind of level to us. Mm. Nowadays, th- again, the standards are on all fronts are, they're kind of low on people's morals and what they will do and what they accept and it's it's low now you understand the vibration is so low and again the internet plays a big part in this. I remember and you know as well there weren't no internet when we was growing up yet like that and when mobile phones come in I remember it was like you I couldn't wait for my mobile to ring you really wanted to get a call on your mobile. Never mind that, like a, like a letter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nowadays, everyone got phones. No one will want to answer their phones. Yeah. You know it's all messages, it's just texts. No one will want to speak to no one. And again, it's by design, you know mm. because they don't want people to connect and be unified and yeah. spread that. Yeah. You understand? Know Have that touch. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. If you've got my shoes, there's a picture in the wall. And it's about touching people. Mm. Really touching. That's why Heart stood, stood at this time, because yeah. we've touched people. We've impact their life and we've touched them in a certain way physically mm. you, understand? you can't really everyone big, big on the internet nowadays but it doesn't have the same weight on the volume you understand no. just when you physically touch them when you know when you're in front of someone and someone's there and you're beatboxing yeah. and you're giving, that's what gives you the goosebumps yeah. you understand when you're on the net yeah it's good and you can mm. like it and all you press like yeah. but it's complete different when you're there physically the handshake the handshake the feeling yeah it's all that give me the craziest Craziest moment where you experienced in a rave? Oh, this can be a good one. The craziest where you're just like, yo, did you see that? <laughs> that happened. We've seen some, we've seen some things, man. But one, the, one memory always sticks out with me, yeah? Again, and it's not good and not bad. It is just what it is. We would, do you remember Gray's Inn on Holborn Road? Of course, yeah, 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 of course. So just for a bit of context for people know, that was like all the ways we used to go in in London... And then grazing was at the after party spot. That's right. All the bad boys went there, the crack smokers and the dealers, and everyone was gone there. But it was a beautiful place. It was lovely. It was a good vibe, yes? <laughs> anyway, me and, again, Swift, big up Swifty. Like I said, he's like a mentor to me. Big up Swifty. We were outside. Um, we were outside. Them times you could smoke in clubs or whatever. We was outside. Um, I don't know what we were doing. We was talking. We used to always sit and talk and have a little drink. And we're outside in the car. And like literally just in front of us, there it, it was like a cowboy western film, yeah. Man was out there shooting after each other, ping, ping, ping. You know what I'm and we're in the car, and me and Swift like, like, oh my gosh, look at this! And we were screaming, it's like we were watching a real life shootout. movie shootout right there. And they're running around the cars like that, back and forth, shooting, and, and me and Swift were screaming, but he said, Bosh! Look at this, Bush. This is why I love you. Cause you're here, you're here, you're here. You're seeing it. That like he was a mentor to me. He was a good few years older than me. But you understand, know he taught me so much stuff. You understand. Know but he was like, Bush. This is why I love you. You're here. If you're not here, you can't see this right now. And he was saying, "Fuck him up." Cause I used to go out. We used to stay out to wherever. You understand. Know Sometimes the man will flake up. They come out with us, and we we used to be out. But I would more in it basically yeah, yeah, yeah. Bush, this is why I love you you're here <laughs> look at this we've seen it live that's why dead man where are they you've got to be here to see it you've got to... and we were screaming out that flipping Whoa. hell but it was it, it, this is what it's just real life yeah yeah man madness Whoa. we've seen so much stuff in the club scene but it, again it is where it is it, it shapes you it makes it what it is and it's, it's a scene in a way you understand it's part of it you understand wow being present in a shootout, bro. Well, we've seen a, we've not, it's not the first one we've seen to be honest with you. Really? But that was like because we were just right in the car there and it was just right there and was watching. We were, were you like, getting ricochets off the car and we, shit? We, we, we were well, not on our car. We, we was in there screaming, probably if they in the car ricochet, we probably wouldn't have heard. Because we were so screaming and laughing that we was we probably wouldn't even heard. We were like, oh my gosh. He said, Bosh, it's why I love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, we were just like Okay, man. El- elated, but at the same time, absolutely yeah, scared, yeah, stricken. Was, yeah, with that flipping, you know, it's, you know, we were like this, you know, when you're holding it, like, 
yeah, 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 yeah. But with this, look, one time we went to ministry, son. <laughs> Again, it's when I think of these things, I just think to myself, wow, it's mad. We was all going to ministry, like a lot of us. And again, we just heard, ping, ping, ping. And shot were flying and there's a bounce of thing. And they were like knocking and running. No, I don't know where they come from this time. We never, I never see it. It's like, yes. And anyway, it's so weird again. Everyone dispersed for a little while. But 20 minutes, half an hour, everyone's still trying to get into ministry. Yes, and ministry's still letting people in. Yeah. And we went in there and we still raves. But again, it's just... I don't know. It's just one. You know what is when you're in that in the scene in the raving culture, mm. you want to get into the rave, and yeah. that's what it is. Yeah, you're yeah. on business. Like you go and raving, you're going in to get in. Especially then, it's not so much like that. The scene isn't the same now. There no. isn't that desire. The, yeah, yeah. It's changed now. You understand? Yeah. It's not like that. But them time there, what? And you still grab the fly pack on the way out. Cool, When's yeah. the next one? What? Exactly. You're in the scene. Mm. You know what I'm saying there was a scene. Mm. Like, what God? Like a little. Um, it's. it's Yes, it's a shootout and whatever. But when you put that in scale mm. to what's going on around the world, wars and these people dropping bombs, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's absolutely nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you put it into... But people are going to say, oh, oh, those boys are shooting out and it's waves and it's... But come on. When you really put it into scale, use what you do, use what are doing. You understand? So, as I said, again, my mum used to say, you understand, who's without sin cast the first stone? You yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just look at what you're doing first, you know, before you even, you know, because this is minor, isolated instance, really, yeah, yeah, truly. Yeah. You, this is what you're doing, you're building up our army and troops and sending people into different countries to take over and yeah, rape yeah. and pillage their countries and do all sorts of mm -mm. unsavouries. Mm. You understand? Um, well, you've got to know the nuances. You've got to feel the vibe. You've got to know what's going on to be able to, put, to, to forecast where the the problems may arise, where you get... Have you got kids? Yeah. What would, what would you say if they were in those positions? Nothing. I'm very... My mum was very liberal with me. You understand? Bring me up in a very liberal way. And, it, again, it served me per, like dividends. She was... She, I could do a lot of stuff. She'd let me go out too late. Obviously, I did have an older brother, so that was part. But she was mm. still very lenient with me. I could bring girls back. Could do a lot of stuff. Yeah, your, exactly. your older brother was the filter of a lot of uh, kind of. In a way, because yeah, he's four years older than me. So, but again, she was still liberal with him. You understand? Mm -hmm. So she was quite liberal with both of us. But she was she had her militancy. But this was my mum's biggest trick, and it, again, it was the best thing. She always used to say, "There's always a price to pay." Mm. So you can go out there and do what you want with the police and do whatever. But no, there's a price to pay. Mm. Whatever you do, there's a price to pay. You can mess around with girls, but there's a price to pay. Mm. You said so many things, as you said, there's a price to pay. So mm. what it does, it taught man from early to be selective mm. in what to do and what not to do. You understand? Mm. Because, and what she says, it's up to you. You can do that if you want, if you're willing to pay the price. And it'd be good if you find out what the price is likely to be before mm. you do it. Then you know what you're getting yourself into. Mm. But, so these things, it gave man a real good, clear-cut way of thinking. Yeah. Then, so then you analyse stuff. And that's what I'm teaching my son to do now. I always say to him, think. A lot of people these days don't think. They don't think, yeah. Understand? But they're not taught to. The repercussions of something that may harm you long term. Think about it. Think. You understand? So that's what mm. I, I'm very... With my son... It's up to you if you want to do it, but think about it. Mm. It's not my life. Mm. I'm living my life and I'm happy. And I mm. tell my kids all the time, I'm happy. I'm over the moon, mm. but I'm doing exactly what I want to do. You understand? You're in love with the scene. You love, you really feel love, love it. it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. But I, this, I'm, 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 my mum was a raver. My dad was a raver. My, mm. my mum had a sound system. Our first speaker, our big first speaker was for my mum's sound system. Our heart was the first speaker. What was her sound system? I don't know what she, what it was called, but I know when oh. they disbanded, they all took bits of the equipment yeah. and she took that speaker and that speaker was our first. You still got the speaker? Still got it. <sighs> Fonty Fon used to do salsa. My mum was doing salsa classes at one time and Fonty was using that same speaker really? in his salsa class, yeah. Hey, many, many years The ones later. that are great, man. They never they yeah. never steer you wrong. Yeah, them speakers that, that can't mm. die. And again, it is, there's so many, we'd have to do two and part three of this. Yeah, yeah. The, the quality <laughs> I'm, already, of music I'm already thinking that. <laughs> of, of them days, the way music, the quality of it, the quality of the speakers, the quality of the sound, Everything. the amps, the records themselves. With the love. Quality, it's just a different different vibe. But yeah, just I'm very liberal with my, my kids. And I, again, similar kind of style how my mum 
of years. And look, guys, you can do what you want to do almost, but think about it and just know there's a price to pay. Mm. In sense. So it's up to you. It's your life. Mm. I'm not going to be able to live it with you. If you end up in prison, I'm not going to be there with you. Mm. In sense, to hold mm. your hand or to do anything. Mm. And I wouldn't even want to be. And no. I wouldn't even if I had the opportunity. Because no. you know what? It's your choice. You make your bed. You've got to mm. lie in it. You understand? So once you know these, I mean, if, especially if you know them from young, it gives you a very good outlook on, on life. Mm-mm. People run fast, don't they? They run too fast into things. Yeah, exactly. But they're not thinking. No. You understand? They're just running into it. Either peer pressure or they're following fashion or whatever, or they get lured into it. And they don't really know. They haven't took the time out yeah. to think. I think parents... Um, f- s- some parents, I think, they p- put pressure on their youngers to achieve things that n- quite often aren't really within the remit of the person that they're... Exactly. They're installing those ideas yeah, too. Exactly. Give yeah. some panic. Make some panic. Exactly. Anxious and everyone's anxious these days. Everyone's got some kind of something wrong with them and whatever. Yeah. And it's just, it's. I don't, I'm never been a believer of like that. My mum was good, and she was had a bit of empathy, but she was not model coddling us or anything like that. Yeah. And she was quite hardcore in a certain way. In sense, it made us resilient. In sense, these days people are not. Knowing that they don't first know themselves, number mm. one, and then you're bringing up kids and you don't even know yourself, so you're not looking at your kids and analysing them and working out who they are and what they want to do. But my, my, one of my sons wants to be a footballer, and again, me and his mum have got IR days a country to each other because mm. I'm saying, All right, you want to be a footballer, go for it, put you, you know, what I'm draw a line of everything goes and put all your energies into it and don't take no for an answer. You understand? I'm not caught up on the school system. I've never mm. have been, you understand? I've never wanted to go to university because I think, why on earth am I going to go and do four years, pay money, X, Y, Z amount of money, study what you want me yeah, to yeah, yeah, learn, yeah. you understand? And then you give me a certificate say that now I know something because you've taught me something that you want me to learn. And then when I come out with a certificate, it doesn't guarantee mm. me anything and I've got a, a big debt. To me, mm. logically, that doesn't make any sense. No sense. Especially if I know what I want to do. So if yeah. I don't know what I want to do, I may as well just do what I want to do. You yeah. And that's what I tell my son. Personally, don't worry about school. Because, Man, do what you want to do. Yeah, they're just teaching you whatever. And the teachers are just being t- told what to do. It's not an, a love thing. They're not teaching you for for you to learn something, for you to become something, or for you to set up your own business. They're just teaching you for, to become a robot. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so to me, it's... They're say, selling books. They're selling books. Basically, that's how I tell to my kids. Don't worry, worry. Just know what you what, what you want to do, you understand? Follow that, follow your heart, follow your mind, you understand? be an individual, you understand? know yourself, mm. you understand? and go, school, they're just going to teach you whatever, and at the end of the day, they say, yeah. But just because you didn't do well in school, it doesn't mean you won't do well in life. Totally. You understand? So, and if just because you do well in school, it doesn't mean you're going to do well in mm. life. You understand? So, again, you you just got to work it out for the individual, and yeah. the school isn't even designed for that anyway, so no. one cat fits all. It, it, it doesn't work. It either. don't work. Life isn't like that. Anxiety and things like that when when you're, like, for instance, your son and the footballing, um, it's actually, the the wins are actually the consistency and keeping on going. You'd like, <laughs> right. do you know what I'm saying? Exactly. That's the win. Exactly, maintaining. Yeah. That's the hardest thing in yeah. that, maintaining and being consistent. Yeah. That in itself is a task. And I tell people nowadays, listen, if you're up and about and you're doing whatever, that is a win, celebrate it, bro, because this is, life is so tricky these days. <sighs> Just to be maintaining a bit of sound mind and spirit is a win. Yeah. Forget anything else. That alone is a win in this day and age. With the pressure Absolutely. of the world and everything and everyone. Just a minute to get out of your bed and breathe is a win. Is it crazy out there? Crazy. What's the deal? Like, How come everything is so... Heightened. Everyone's under pressure right now. Everyone I speak to is under some kind of pressure. But again, like you said, you've, you're busting the chimps and people will take them away and, and when they hear it back and listen to it, it's by design. Yeah, by design. It's not by choice. I mean, yeah, it's by chance. It's not mm. by chance. Mm. It's by design. Mm. It's people that, they know what they're doing. This has been forecast and planned. So mm. You've got a few pockets of people who are going against the plan and mm. running against the, the tidal wave. You know but by and large... They're having a, 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 a sweep. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Did you ever, I mean, your radio show, oh my God, let's get into that real quick. Um, conduit, you're a conduit 
to the scene, you're, you're moving the dial, you're pushing and introducing new people into the frame, you've got the old school of guys as well, everything's coming together. Did you ever think that you would, at this point in 2024, be in that position where you're able to steer attention to the things that you love? Mm. Probably not is how you've explained it there. I would have expected to be doing something in and around, but I don't, I was when I was younger and I had all these big dreams, they were more for the self. Mm. So I, yeah, I get you. Yeah, yeah, I get so you. So I would have expected to be doing great things, but more for the self and for the glory. Yeah, yeah. Where, and I've got older, it's not so much about me. Mm. You understand? Mm. It's about making change and uplifting, and that's the power. Mm. I'm the, the job I've been tasked with. You understand? Mm. So it's not necessarily about myself. It's about the other people and mm. it's helping and fighting the good fight. You yeah, understand? Yeah, I do. So, so. The value that you you bring. Um, there's, and you know, for likes myself and the, and the people that um, I feel completely feel where you're coming from, you 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 uh, achieve certain goals, and then and then you're like, well, what was next? Well, we have to bring up, yeah, we have exactly. to move it it's on. About, yeah, exactly. And that's again, it's what you've done. You've, you've mapped it in your era. You understand? It, arguably the best. And but this now is not a best. You sharing and bringing in yeah. that. Okay, yeah, I've done what I've done. You understand? Now this is another level. I'm doing this. this you know, I'm yeah. five for hundred podcasts deep. I keep on saying it because it's just amazing. You know, understand? But again, it's sharing. It's bringing everyone else in. You know, understand? And sharing their stories and sharing the knowledge and edu and educating people. It's a celebration of culture. Yeah, blatantly. And the UK do it so fucking well. Yeah, there's a lot of things we do, and we don't really. <laughs> not, you understand? Know, no one ain't really giving us. Uh, yeah. Props for it, but it is what it is. Do you yes, think? Dan. Do you think? Um, do you think um, if we were because America always um, celebrates it, the UK, Europe incubate it. Do you think if we were given flowers too soon, we would lose that um, that drive for creative um, uh, creative output? Mm, good question. It's a good question. Would we be complacent if it was sunny like LA every single day and we'd be going getting mimosas and eating avocados? Do you know what I mean? Do you think we'd have the same angst? Excuse me. Mm, it's, it's very, that's a good question. Because we've got a certain grit and a certain energy to us. But I don't know, it swings both ways because, again, with the sun and the vibe, would that heighten us? Would we even become more mm. of... You understand what we already are. You understand? Because mm. when the sun comes out, you know, everyone's on a vibe and it lifts everyone's spirits. Beer gardens. Yeah. See you later, everyone. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, wow. <laughs> you understand? We, we get little glimmers of it. So when we get a little glimmer of it, it's like, yeah. everyone goes crazy. But yeah. if we had that all the time, yeah. you understand? It'd be a different story. You mm. understand? So. You know who encapsulates that for me, Wiley? You know, mm. he can go happy one minute and yeah. get grimy one. Uh, he's yeah. like, for me, he's like the be <laughs> He's like the meter of like where the British culture is, right? Yeah, 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 that's right. <laughs> now I, I, I take my hat off to him, man, and he, I, I like him with his outspoken, he's himself, yeah, you understand? He just... he, he's who he is, he's not trying to be anything other than who he is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, really, I rate him, man. Again, he's stood the test of time, man. Yeah. And again, it's a real talent. Resilience. When yeah, when you've got that. Mm. Yeah, man, it's, 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 a, it's a good thing. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's We're a good in a good team. place. Yeah, man, definitely, man. I think it's so just going back, I just thought, for, for the, the Americans, um, they've got a, a cockiness about them, which we haven't necessarily got in the We're UK. understated, aren't we? Yeah, yes, and that's a, mm. that is, in that, that question, that kind of comes into it. I don't know where, but there, there's something in and around that mm. as well. Yes, and we're kind of, He's back and out more humble with it, whereas that they a lot and Jamaicans are like that. Yeah, very much so. Much more in your face and oh, we're the best. Yeah, and sense. It goes back to the blues and rock and roll as well. Um, not only for the bluegrass era in America, mm. where the underdogs definitely got celebrated and the machine took it. Um, hip hop as well, but um, you know the re-importing of rock and roll back into America, um, and grime is doing that now inadvertently. Drill is doing that in a yeah, button. Yeah, 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 that's right. It's so, and again, to be in the scene and forecasting and knowing. See, yeah. 
Ze put in place, man. But yeah. yeah, but God. Give thanks. Got to give thanks. Yeah, man. To the, all the pioneers, you. man. Yeah, man. It's, you, you mentioned a couple of them, the Navis. You understand? I've got big Shabba. Ragga Twins. Five old Ragga Twins. You understand? MC Depp, Brookie, you, you mentioned. You understand? Mm. All the people in the ones before the Tenor Flies, Daddy Freddy, Irie, Daddy, Daddy Freddy, Tipper Irie, mm. all them the Saxon sound. There's so many. The lineage is strong. Um, what's my man's name? Smiley Culture. Smiley Culture. Yeah, top all, cat. Top cat. Yeah, and all these people yeah, yeah. and they shaped it. And you know, each one teach one to they send them man they bang it and then the next set bang it and then that, that. and it just goes on and it's an yeah. evolution but it's good for us to be able to look back and give them and the flowers mm. London Posse oh. it's a demon boys demon skin boys man, skinny man demolition them man, man. The demolition man oh. these man need they, you mm. understand these are man of the cornerstones mm. Mm. of the UK thing they're actual cornerstones yeah. Mike GLC yeah Jensen who set trends and set MC levels MC Duke rest in peace MC Duke yes oh, so yeah, many man. So many. Um, who we're so many that we haven't mentioned. <laughs> you know, but we we big you up in yeah, advance. You understand? Because there's so so many names that man mm. can call, but they've all helped to shape the UK thing to, yeah. to bring it into what it is. It's it's, a, it's beautiful. Bruv, you're up there. You're up we've there. Done our thing. On the eve of your birthday. You're... Yeah, yeah, man. No. You're there, bro. <laughs> we've done our thing as well, man. Yeah. We're putting our sin again, and we, yeah. Again, we fly the flag. Everyone's got to just do their little thing. Everyone play their position. Yeah. That's what it is. Everyone play yeah. their position. You understand? Know exactly. Yeah, we're playing ours. We've, we've played ours. You understand? Know and, and we're continuing. Mm. You understand? Know because, like I said at the beginning, there's more work to be done. What's the future? Um, from I've, my thing now, I've set up a independent record label. Fantastic. Um, What's the name? Bush Special Quarters. I'm calling it the mm. UK's first independent black record label. I'm, Fantastic. What yes. I'm trying to do. Again, is change the narrative of the word black. You know what I'm saying? Because often people hear black and they, they just think of guns, knives, this, that, and the other, weed or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So I want to change and I want people to hear it and think upliftment, mm. think vibes, you know what I'm saying? Think unity, you know what I'm saying? This is what I'm about. It's not that I'm just trying to work with black people. No, I want to work with everybody and spread love through the mm. power of music. Just so I'm saying black and I know, especially in this country, we're a deficit, you understand? Mm -hmm. There's so many loopholes. It's not, not an even playing ground, mm -hmm. you understand? So, man, I'm trying to change that. But the, the, with the, the music we're making again, I've kind of fashioned myself after Motown, Barry Gordy, you understand? I'm trying to do something like that. Bring artists in, develop them, you understand? Spend the time, you understand? Mm -hmm. Have that unity, have that love, have that feeling, have that, mm -hmm. that family spirit, that community. That's what I'm trying to do with, um, with Bushbrush Recordings and put out good music. Again, we're free. We're mm. not under the knife or under any pressure from anyone to do anything. So we can do what is in our mm. minds and what's in our hearts and be free because freedom is priceless. Yeah. You know so, so yeah, so that's that, that's where I'm at. What man done with the Heartless Crew, you know, so, oh, that was free people. Man are gonna do the similar thing with the record label, but this could be 300 people, you understand? Know mm. It's going to be bigger, you understand? Know yeah. And with arts, obviously, we had to be in certain places. Obviously, tapes travelled and stuff like that. But now we're making music, and I want the music to outlast ourselves. Mm. You know, and to, to have that same... Because people are not really making music with a cause and a feeling. Mm. And, and a uh, mission brief. And a, Yeah, and that's where I want man want to be different. So that's, the, that's my main thing right now, and, and the baby. That's where I'm putting a lot of my energy. Obviously, I'm still out there performing and still doing whatever, but th that's my main mm. my main vibe and my main goal and really want to make make the label great. Fucking more power to you and even more power that you're still out there doing it. But, I mean, you're the okay sign to a lot of people. The fact yeah. that you're still... We're still here doing it. You're still there yeah. doing it. Is and we it, can do it. Yeah. And, yeah. and they can do it as well. You can still... People don't have to worry about age or this, that, and other. It's got nothing... Jay, I look at James Brown. Yeah. Their man are up performing, <sighs> doing the moonwalk, jumping up, doing the splits. George Clinton's still, still out there doing it. Yeah. Exactly. Teddy Riley's still out there doing, doing it. <laughs> Tina Turner, them people are cold. Yeah. Still, cold. Bruv. They cold. created the, 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 uh, the templates... Motown created the template. Yeah, the, yeah. The exactly, City, baby. Exactly, exactly, brother. Power, so yeah, man. That's where my mind's at, and you understand. Building takes time, and again, man's going at the hard, long way. So it takes triple hard. I could argue, just pack up my gloves and say, yeah, you know what, man's done what wow. I've done, and, and be bow out gracefully, or I could just try and 
do the solo thing, which everyone tries to do, mm. and just be like, yeah, and, mm. and be the man. But no, you know what? There's mm. a bigger cause here. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, and you can smell it as well when people are out for that. Um, when you're giving back to the culture, when you're giving back to young people, you're giving back to the scenes. Oh man, that resonates. People, people, they magnetize to that. Yeah, no, well, again, I, I love it. And the end, man's here for it. And yeah, man's on, on a mission, the end. Like, again, part of this, um, and I've, it's, I've had it even for a little while, but I'm kind of morphing into it slowly. The more I'm thinking, the more it's resonating. I, I see myself now as. A, a music mogul, mm -hmm. and especially it's weird as well. Because I had to sometimes I had to sit and have conversations with myself, as we all do. Mm -hmm. And the other day I was laughing, I was making myself laugh because I was saying all this stuff that's going on with Puff Daddy and mm -hmm. all these things I said. And my man was like, he was that guy in the end. I said, you know what? There's a clear out happening right now. There's there a is shift. a cleansing going yeah. on. Yeah, so it's going to make space for a man who's really genuine so and want to do this. Because this is what I want to do. I want. I I always liked the the. I go. I don't know them personally, but I've liked what they've done and what they've been doing. Master P, mm, gosh, um, oh my... um, what's his name? Fifty Cent, Pop Daddy, mm. Birdman. They've all got bits and pieces yeah. that I liked of what they were doing. And yeah. Russell Simmons, you understand? That there's other bits of what I don't like and what other things you hear. Like, oh, but by and large, that kind of that's how I'm viewing myself now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And with and a lot so. of the clear out going on now, I'm thinking myself, okay, there's space and there isn't really that over no. here, you understand? No. So yeah, that's that's where man's at. It's mad in hindsight when you look back, you know, shiny suit era, of course, but uh, <laughs> you know what Puff Daddy was doing. We were so we were so blind. Well, we knew you, you could tell, oh. you could smell it, you could smell it. What the fuck? Like, yeah. how does that work? Yeah, you yeah. You know, all of a sudden he owns all the rights to Puff Daddy, um, to uh, uh, Biggie, Biggie Smalls, and it's like, oh, like. Yeah, we're not. Are we not? Hello. Yeah, yeah. Well <laughs> dropping property. Yeah. yeah, but when and you talk now, about these master P's and the people that really were pushing things, that's right. Mm. The, 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 yeah, and I, I love the way he's kept under the radar. He's always done his thing. He's and sand, but he never really crossed right over and the yeah. sand with, with maintains the, the whole yeah, time. Exactly. So he's a beacon of light for me, man. And the sand. Again, again, each one teach one because it's the end sand. Mm. Yeah. So that's the future. That's, yeah, man, that's, that's, yeah. Well, I hope you're inspired. I hope you're taking something away from this. Legends in the building, with nothing less on the Killer Keller Legends podcast. Legends of the S. <laughs> you're in Kaluuya yeah, and Zen. I like that, yes, man. Yo, Bushkin in the place. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for coming no, through, my brother. Thank you so much, man. Love. Love, 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 man. I know you're a busy man and uh, it, it means the world that you're here. Killer Keller podcast, out like him was out of fashion, you know it, dude. Crime don't pay, but neither did I, so you stay tight, all right? Uh, <laughs> don't, talk, <laughs> don't talk to anyone I wouldn't, yeah? Stay lucky, all right? Love that. Peace. Peace. Yo, Yo that was fuego.